you know when you hear that fact you're like oh that's just like a nice thing to know but like archaeologically it's actually incredibly important to know because um when animals such as the rabbits uh burrow through the archaeological record they can actually kind of you know uh what's the word i'm looking for (laughs) like dismantle things uh so i guess going back what (laughs) which just seems like uh you know when you hear that fact, you're like, oh, that's just like a nice thing to know. But like archaeologically, it's actually incredibly important to know because um, when animals such as the rabbits uh, burrow through the archaeological record, they can actually kind of, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like dismantle things. Uh, so I guess going back. A- what? <laughs> that's the word. There is a word for it. Uh, I was trying to use the word. Dis- Basically, when you're dealing with the archaeological record, a lot of times it's not a perfect layers when it comes to like context, but you know it kind of is. Um, and so, burrowing animals such as rabbits, you know, they'll they'll burrow. They do not care for context, which is rude to be honest. So sometimes you'll get like a jumble of. Oh, you learn something new every day. I did not know there was a word for it. Uh, I was trying to use the word dismantle. Um, yeah, I guess. But I mean, I guess to kind of back up a little bit, basically, when you're dealing with the archaeological record, a lot of times it's not a perfect layers when it comes to like context, but you know, it kind of is. Um, and so burrowing animals such as rabbits, you know, they'll, they'll burrow, they do not care for context, which is rude, to be honest. So sometimes you'll get like a jumble of things from different time periods because of those burrows that they've made. It's really rude, I think.
just seems like, uh, you know, when you hear that fact, you're like, oh, that's just like a nice thing to know. But like archaeologically, it's actually incredibly important to know because um, when animals such as the rabbits uh, burrow through the archaeological record, they can actually. to an extent, especially if you look at so the more modern rabbits, where like a server since a rabbit fancy, you get all these weird and wonderful breeds. Uh, and some do, do get quite large, probably larger than a hare, some of them. Like if you look at, I think, Dutch lops at, uh, or, is that, or the Flemish, look, they're, they're meant to be huge. Um, but yeah, so it has, um, taxonomically, taxonomically speaking, the genus is Lepus. Um, and then you get various sort of Seuss genus, that's the term for it, depending on the geographical location. So the ones we tend to get in Britain, at, le at least, um, you have the mountain hare, the Lepus timidus, and the brown hare. Um, which are, uh, only the mountain by inconveniently burrowing into something and dying in there. Uh, uh, rabbits are renowned for and is actually reflected in their own sort of taxonomical uh uh, the scientific name for rabbit which is that we're going to cover in this episode which is that we're going to cover in this episode uh, are hares and rabbits Extent, especially if you look at so the more modern rabbits, where like a server since a rabbit fancy, you get all these weird and wonderful breeds.
which is basically the daughter language a few step with a few extra steps you know <laughs> see <laughs> show me pillow your italian which is basically the daughter language of latin let's be honest here yeah exactly <laughs> it's the language of latin let's be honest here please <laughs> show me pillow your italian which is basically the daughter language of latin let's be honest here yeah exactly <laughs> italian's just latin but a few step with a few extra steps you know Exactly. <laughs> Italian's just Latin. No, no, it's Simona, please. <laughs> Show me Pilla your Italian, which is basically the daughter language of Latin, let's be honest here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Italian's just Latin, but a few step with a few extra steps, you know? <laughs> See? Even you say ish. <laughs> And uh, Bastet can take it apart as well. Right. Uh, who's going to take this over? Um, so, Mona, do you want to introduce this one? Uh, since last time, I think it was Alex, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Remind me again, what should I be mentioning? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Archeo Animals, the podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to Archaeo Animals, the, the podcast about the archaeology of animal bones. So on this month's episode, we'll be discussing um, ancient goddesses, eggs and bunny rabbits in the zoo archaeology of lagomorphs. And with you as always, Simone. So on this month's On this month's episode, we'll be discussing um, ancient goddesses ancient goddesses, eggs and bunny rabbits in the zoo archaeology of lagomorphs. And with you as always, Simona Falanga and my co-host, Alex Fitzpatrick. Yeah, so let's get this rolling. Yeah, so let's get this rolling. Um, <laughs> um, Do you have anything really pressing you want to say? Maybe something that you have in all caps on the uh, show notes right now? <laughs> with, uh, hold on, let me think. One. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Archaeo Animals, the podcast about the archaeology of animal bones. 
On this month's episode, we'll be discussing ancient goddesses, eggs and bunny rabbits within the zoo archaeology of Lagomorphs. And with you as always, Simona Falanga and my co-host, Alex Fitzpatrick. Do you have anything really pressing you want to say? Maybe something that you have in all caps on the uh, show notes right now? <laughs> if, uh, hold on, let me think. One, two, four exclamation points, folks. Four. Wow, no, that, that's serious stuff. Is yeah. I was trying, trying to find the right way to phrase it. Um, so yeah, this... That's serious stuff. Is I was trying, trying to find the right, the right way to phrase it. So yeah, this, this first disclaimer, rabbits and hares, for that matter, are not rodents. So that's see, something that gets um, brought up or that I've heard in some brought that gets brought up or that I've heard in conversations an amount. Uh, I think most. Uh, I think. I think mostly in Italian more than anything because the verb for gnawing. Mm-hmm. So, like, is that rabbits gnaw in English as well? Is that the right term? Yeah. Um, it'll be rodere. Um, it'll be... Um, yeah. It'll be rodere in Italian. So because they do that, the sort of that chewing... Um, The sort of that chewing, a lot of people presume that rabbits are rodents because they gnaw. It, it doesn't have the same effect. It doesn't have the same effect in English, but ra- rabbits are not rodents. Ra- well, I mean, like, even I was gonna say, even morphologically, if you look at their teeth, rodents. Well, I mean, like, even I was gonna say, even morphologically. If- little incisors and stuff because they do have a, a similar structure yeah similar but but not not quite but yes neither habits or nor rare hairs are so nor rare hairs are ro- rodents they uh belong belong to the family of lagomorphs and specifically the and specifically the Leporidae family. Leporidae. I had no idea how to pronounce that word until you just said it. <laughs> a lot of this podcast is me. A lot of this podcast is me, me learning the pronunciations of words that I've only just, just read in my head. Yeah, and probably, we probably pronounce them wrong half the time. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I go by the very little Latin that I've done at school. I do like, but I do like, but sorry, I was going to ask what a lagomorph means. <laughs> does, do either of you know? Like, what does lago and morph mean? Something in the shape. I do like, but sorry. School. I do like. Sorry, I was going to ask what a lagomorph means. I do like. Sorry, I was going to ask what a lagomorph means. Sorry, I was going to ask what a lagomorph means. Does 
Does that even mean no? Like, what does Lago and Morph mean? Something in the shape of a Lago. <laughs> there you go. Do you not, not know what a Lago is? No, you no. Fool. It's Ramona, please. please. <laughs> Uh, show me Pilla your Italian, which is basically the daughter language of Latin. Let's be honest here. Yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. You should. You have no excuse. Yeah, exactly. Italian's just Latin, but a few steps ste- with a few extra steps. You know. Yeah. Ish. See, even <laughs> you say ish. <laughs> See, it's the same as in Latin. Ish, the verb to maybe. You know, I don't know where I was running around with that. But I'm sure uh, Lego must mean something. Is it in the show notes? Yes. In my head, it's saying lake, but it's not lake. Um, <laughs> <'cause>, <laughs> what, um, what else is in? It means something, but thank you for highlighting my own ignorance. It's really ignorance as well. I, I have no idea. Uh, I'll go back to my ignorant, um, my little ignorant cor- corner. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not really a corner as it is like a podcast i guess well i mean it's not really a corner as it is like a pod- podcast i guess are you calling my entire podcast an ignorant no i'm calling all of, of us collectively ignorant because none of us know what <laughs> it means it's in the shape of a lago there yeah you know whatever a lago may be it's fine probably <laughs> not lake they're not in the shape of a lake although rabbits can be pretty liquid yeah no and i think we'll We'll probably get into that <laughs> at some point. Um, but, but anyway, the, the main two... At some point. But anyway, the, the main two species that we're going to cover in this episode are hares and rabbits, because they're the ones that are most often encountered in the archaeological record, at yeah. least in, in the region that we, both Alex and I, tend to. Of knowledge, of knowledge, around. Sorry, sorry. I'm like, I was trying to find the definition for a lago. <laughs> it was gonna annoy me, and I couldn't find anything. I don't think I I wrote it in right. I'm I'm okay. <laughs> what were we talking about before we went on this Latin kick? I, th- I believe you were gonna tell us a bit about hairs. Oh yeah, hair. Oh yeah, hares and rabbits, but mostly rabbits. Both, no, both. Ish. Yes. So I mean, to be honest, actually, I I didn't know the difference between rabbits and hares till like maybe I don't know a couple months ago. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, no, I'm just like, because I, I, I don't think there was much difference, but um, that's, that's, in terms that's, of... You're not alone in that. That's in that's, terms of... You're not alone in this. Yeah, no, yes, I just... Can... Yeah, I thought they were... Alone in this. Yeah, I thought they were just kind of the same. <laughs> You'll find that actually the Romans just called oh. them all hares. To them, they were just all, all hares. Actual hares are hares. Rabbits. Actual hares are hares. Rabbits also hares. Also, hares coming from the Iberian Peninsula. That's what they call Can't rabbits. Get through one episode without hearing about the Romans. My goodness. No, it's once again been zero episodes since the last Roman reference. I think we'll live, though. Anyway, um, so yeah, th- there are actual differences. Anyway, um, I think we'll live, though. So yeah, th- there are actual differences. A lot of them are a bit m- more... Um, I know hares tend to have... Um, I know hares... I know hares tend to have those like longer ears, uh, with, with bigger eyes. Uh, with...
bigger eyes. And then something that you said generally be bigger. That's kind of something I think you find at astronaut things as well. Yeah, I guess oh, the, 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 long, the longer limbs as well. Yeah. Because I guess sizes do overlap to an extent. Especially mm. if you look, so the more modern rabbits, where, where like a service since a rabbit and fancy, get all these weird and wonderful breeds, uh, and some yeah. do, do get quite large. It's probably larger than hair, some of them, like, you know, I think Dutch lots are, uh, or is that the Flemish? But they're meant to be huge. Huge. Yeah. Um, there, so it has, there, so it has um, taxonomically, taxonomically speaking, it has um, tax. Um, taxonomically, taxonomically, but has taxonomically speaking, the genus is Lepus. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then you get various sort of Seuss genus. That's term term for it, depending on the geographical location. So the ones. We tend to get in Britain at, le at least. Um, you have you have the mountain hair, the leopard and the, the mm -hmm. brown hair. Yeah. Um, so which which uh, uh, only the mountain hair is actually native. Uh, only the mountain hare is actually native, while the brown hare was in introduced. Again, a very strange, like, differentiation that I had no idea of, nor did I know that there was a mountain hare or a brown hare until, until I started working on uh, British zooarchaeology. British zooarchaeology. I but am just so blank with no knowledge in my brain <laughs> until I moved here, apparently. Yeah, but again, it's, it's one of those th things that yeah, you need to distinguish if you got, you know, all this fishy bits. Like, yeah, skin, stuff like that. Um, exactly. Um, stuff like that. Um, yeah, skin, stuff like that. Um, exactly. Um, but yeah. She bits on. Yeah, skin, stuff like that. Exactly. But yeah, uh, the one I guess interesting thing about hares that unlike rabbits, they're not burrowing animals, but they will, however, take advantage of natural depressions in the ground to seek shelter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So th they don't have that burrowing habit that uh, rabbits are renowned. That uh, that uh, rabbits are renowned for. that rabbits are renowned for habit that rabbits are renowned for and is actually reflected in their own sort of taxonomical uh, name which is a mouthful to pronounce um, taxonomically uh... so, um... taxonomically uh, rab the, the scientific name for rabbits is you can do it Oryctolagus cuniculus there you go so um, I can do that from cuniculus being like a tu tunnel so and that's from their ability and uh, keenness on digging tunnels. And as a rabbit owner, I'm widely aware of that, as my rabbit keeps inexorably trying to tunnel his way out of his hutch. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. Yes, he just is incredible. Yes, he just he's incredibly cute. He just also happens to have an appetite for destruction. Well, the funny thing actually about rabbits and the fact that they burrow, which just seems like, uh, you know, when you hear that fact, you're like, oh, that's just like a nice. Seems like, uh, you know, when you hear that fact, you're like, oh, that's just like a nice thing to know. But like, I know, I think really that's the incredibly important to know because um, when animals look into rabbits, uh, but... um, when when animals such as uh what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> actually kind of you know what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> like actually kind of you know what's the word i'm looking for <laughs>
what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like dismantle things. Uh, so actually, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like dismantle. record they can actually like dismantle things uh so i guess going back uh so i guess going back bioturbation Bioturbation. What? Bioturbation. That, that, I guess would be the name for it. It's like word. disturbance. It's either it, it is. It's either it's disturbance from burrowing, burrowing animals or roots. Huh? You learn something new every day. I did not know there was a word for it. Uh, I was trying to use the word dismantle. Um, um. I mean, also not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But I mean, I guess to kind of back back up a little bit, basically. Basically, when you're dealing with the archaeological record, a lot of times it's not a perfect layer when it comes to like context, but you know, no, it kind of is. Um, and so, burying animals, um, and so, so burying animals such as rabbits, you know, they'll they'll burrow. They do not. Context, which is weird, to be honest. So sometimes they get like a jumble of um, things from different countries because of those burrows that they've made. It's really weird, I think. Yeah, be like, oh, what's this? Uh tobacco clay pipe doing in my roman ditch <laughs> hot take rabbits rude i've said it i'll say it again also they smoke <laughs> evidently yeah bad for your health no nah. what's a rabbit doing with a clay pipe yeah bad for your health no nah. what's a rabbit doing with a clay pipe that's why i want to know all right you, you know something that we don't so there's a rabbit conspiracy going. There's always a conspiracy going. But it's not just that, because they can also mess up them dating just by inconveniently burrowing into something and dying. Yeah, in there. oh my gosh. We'll, we'll, cover it, we'll cover it in a little bit. But of course, because of um, our little bit, but of course, because of um, our current, of course, because of... Um, but of course, because of um, our um, our um, of course, because of our current estimated timeline for introduction of rabbits to different parts of the world, uh, you can use their remain to date the context that you're excavating. But then again, was that rabbit actually? Actually meant to be there, or did it just burrow its way in there? Again, extremely rude. <laughs> no one asked for considerate those. bunny rabbits. Mm, yeah, exactly. But yeah, so uh, you know the uh, we have the mountain hare, which exactly. But yeah, so uh, so uh, you know the uh, we have the mountain hare. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, we have the mountain hare, which is native, uh, and then we have the brown hare, which is introduced, uh, and then you get and then you get rabbits, which are also native to Britain, but they're actually naturalized. Yeah, because they're technically they were introduced. I mean, we'll we'll discuss it in more detail later on, but they were supposedly introduced to Britain. Uh, during the Roman period. During the Roman period. Un unsurprisingly for everyone. Um, but, um, um, but, um, yeah, they've been here for so long that unsurprisingly for everyone, yeah, they've been here, here for so long that for all intents and purposes are naturalised. So I think if you ask a lot of people or whether like rabbits are native or not, like the I guess a fair few few of them will say I'm oh, just native. Yeah, it's very confusing. But let's move on to the uh, morphology of Lagomorph. So uh, one really interesting thing about them, uh, <laughs> really something I have never noticed, is that working with so 
learning um, skulls and uh, uh, skulls and uh, teeth of lagomorphs and uh, teeth uh, teeth and teeth of lagomorphs is that they have no How did that not occur to you? Literally not noticed it. Because uh, clearly I've never noticed Literally not noticed it. How did that not occur because, to you? Because uh, clearly I've never noticed that they're squirrels Literally not noticed it. How did that not occur to you? Because uh, clearly I've never noticed that there are squirrels here I have. I was confused if crows existed in this in this country. I just don't pay attention to anything. Oh, well, uh, having mostly an herbivorous diet. Oh, well, uh, have. Well, having mostly an herbivorous diet, uh, lagomorphs do not have canines. Um, the interesting thing about their dentition is that their teeth all grow continuously, which is also part Ooh. of the reason why whenever you get a pet rabbit, you always get t told by vets and experts to always keep an eye on their teeth because, of course, they need to be filed constantly sort of um, with a diet of mainly hay. Um, with a diet of main, with a diet of mainly, sort of, with a diet of mainly hay, and of course, if they don't get that and their teeth grow, grow too long, it leads to all sorts, sorts of problems. So yeah, so that's a thing. Ew. Ugh, gross. <laughs> Ugh, gross. <laughs> To be fair, I've always found their teeth really weird looking. They're very, um, I don't know what the word is, but... I, I do awful. find them a bit unsettling, <laughs> so I try not to look at... They're very, um, I don't know what the word is, but... I, I do awful. find them a bit unsettling, <laughs> so I try not to look at, um, at, at my rabbits. Um, at my rabbits. Um, at my not to look at my rabbit's teeth too much. Not that I usually have a chance, like, have much of an occasion to, unless I'm ch usually have a chance, like, have much, not that I usually have a chance, like, have a chance, like, a chance, like, have, have a chance, like, have much of an its teeth too much not that i usually have much of an occasion to unless i'm checking just to make sure that his um teeth are, are getting filed prop um teeth his teeth are getting filed properly um Properly. And another interesting thing about the dentition is actually their incisors are uh, separated from the rest of the chick teeth by a diastema. So that actually there's a break between the incisors and the rest of them. So they actually there's a break between the incisors and the rest, rest of their teeth that are further down. You would have noticed uh, that are further down. You would have noticed uh, on a, a rabbit skull that there's quite yeah. a, bit, a bit of no, a break. It... there's quite a bit of a break and which is nice because uh i mean even without that the because uh i mean nice because even without that the rabbit skulls are so unique in comparison to other mammals especially, especially smaller mammals but uh they're, it's extremely helpful to have that by the way you know what's horrifying is uh when you pick up a rabbit skull and the thing that's ever happened to me <laughs> by far it's very upsetting um, um but yeah and um 
Um, but yeah, and um, the chick teeth are the chick teeth are prismatic in shape, and all like with few exceptions, all tend to mo mostly look alike. So you can you can differentiate between <sighs> them, but yeah, good luck. Um, now, in terms of telling. Um, hares and rabbits apart uh of course like we have the thing of course like we have the thing about more elongated limbs in hares and still talking about dentition i mean their teeth are very similar so i guess dentition mm -hmm. will probably not be a good thing to use to tell them apart but in nope. terms of, i guess in terms of cranial shape apart nope but in terms of, i guess in ter terms of cranial shape again because Hairs tend to have larger eyes, so you're, you're like you're looking at um, larger orbits, larger orbits in a skull, and um, but to be fair, they are fairly distinct, like rabbits and hares, in, in terms of um, skull morphology, aren't they? Of um, skull, in terms of skull morphology, aren't they? A bit, but the problem, of course, as with all archaeology is that you never get them perfectly intact, which is why I um, <laughs> at least in my research, I literally have a uh, in between category for like it's a lagomorph, a uh, in between. We have a in between. Because there are guys. Because the archaeologists can't have nice things. Because also, in a way, wild hairs tend to be larger than rabbits. Sizes do overlap. Yep, exactly. And then... But domestication is... It's pretty uh, recent in the grand scheme of things, especially when we talk about domesticates. You know, we don't talk about it in like hundreds of years, but it's not necessarily the case. Yeah, because the domestication... The jury's still out on when... Uh, rabbits have been domesticated. Uh, rabbits have been. Rabbits have been. Dom rabbits have been domesticated, and uh, of course, it's the usual case that probably they were. And uh, of course, it's the usual. Of course, it's the usual domesticated of course is the usual case that probably there were there were many attempts of domestication during different time periods and different geographical locations uh but comparatively it's but comparatively it's a lot more recent than say sort of the neolithic period for everything else <laughs> pretty much everything else but rabbits so d differences in morphology So differences in morphology have re really only started showing up recently. So yeah. uh, a domesticated archaeological rabbit is like a domesticated archaeological rabbit is less likely to look very, very much alike a wild rabbit. rabbit. Yep, we can't have nice things, clearly. Yeah, because I guess that they would have been tamed, but I guess maybe the only selection that would have been carried carried out, aside from tameness, which doesn't necessarily show on bones, <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess would have been to obtain different uh, fur colours. Fur colours, as they've been accidentally used for, for pelts, but um, that, that was probably... But um, that was probably it. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> yeah, they're um, they're very hard, and uh, I... <laughs> they're very hard. And uh, I think after this next break, we will get into how much how difficult it can be, and also talk a bit about the it can be, and also talk about how much. How difficult it can 
how difficult it can be. And also talk a bit about the Romans, which I'm sure Simona will love to do. Ah, oh, if I have to. Hair shaped, as in hair, as in like hair in your he head. No, as in hair, like the the mammal. That's so not oh helpful. God. So it's like it's... lagosmorphe from the Greek. So yeah, hair shaped. So a hair. Please keep struggling, ba please. Bastard. Right. And we're back, and uh. Uh, if I have to. And we're back, and uh, just want to point out, uh, during, and uh, just and, uh, uh, just and uh, just want to point out, uh, during the break, Simona looked up what Lago meant. <laughs> so I was looking at the language because it comes from the Greek. Uh, Lagos, which Lagos, which literally just means hair, as in the mammal hair. So lagomorphs are hair-shaped mammals. So what did we learn? Uh, don't trust words because don't trust words because nothing makes sense, and I hate it. <laughs> no, so not helpful. Hashtag nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. Nothing makes sense. Let's talk about uh, lagomorphs uh, more specifically now that we've gotten the uh, the basics done. So why? <laughs> so why? <laughs> I just had a stroke. Sorry. Uh, so why? So why do we find hares and rabbits? in the archaeological record because people put them there <laughs> as part of our grand rabbit conspiracy <laughs> as part of our grand rabbit conspiracy um i mean hairs of i mean hairs of course have been extensively hunted uh, yep. Since time in memoriam, um, there, there is um, um, there, there is um, there is um, there is um, 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 um. There is, you know, you get, I guess, evidence of that in, in the archaeology. I guess evidence of that in. There is, I guess, evidence of that in, in the archaeological record. So if you find them, in I mean, there are a few spits uh, with the usual cut marks. I mean, they have been butchered, like it's a food. You might find them with taphonomic marks. Food. You might mm -hmm. find them with taphonomic marks that. For food, mm -hmm. you might find them with taphonomic marks that, that indicate uh, them having been cooked. Um, of course, you also get evidence in the written record. You, you find evidence in art. Uh, oh, everywhere! I mean, I was just thinking about how I think. Oh, everywhere! I mean, I was just thinking about how I think. This is more uh, like anecdotal, but like uh, at least with art that I've seen. 
at least with art that I've seen, uh, specifically classical art, I feel like hairs are like the animal I've seen, uh, specifically classical art, uh, specifically classical Typically, classical art. I specifically, classical art. I feel like hares are like the animal that's always being hunted in a lot of these artworks. Yeah, um, I mean the one Roman evidence. Uh... Um, I mean the one works. Yeah, um, I mean the one. I mean, the one Roman, Roman evidence uh, in art mm -hmm. <laughs> I've got to provide here something, is... Uh, something oh, different. Rome. Yeah. Uh, well, to be fair, we're moving from the center of the empire, moving a little bit more on the outskirts. of these artworks yeah i mean the one roman evidence uh in art <laughs> in art <laughs> i've got to provide here something, is uh oh, something different rome yeah uh, uh what to be fair we're moving from uh what to be fair we're what to be fair we're moving from the center of the empire moving a little bit more on the outskirts because this one yeah. um example Example is a a mosaic, um, is a, a is a example is a mosaic, um, uh, of in a very nice uh, of in a very nice uh, Roman villa in Sicily. Um, called, Pia called Piazza Medina. So it's the Villa Piazza Medina of the town of So it's the Villa Piazza Medina of the, the town of the same name. Um, the, the mosaic in question is the name. The, the mosaic in question is called the Little Hunt. So you have a huntsman on foot hunt showing to be hunting hares even though the depictions of um huntsmen on horses of huntsmen on horseback uh, you find that elsewhere uh, you find that elsewhere they are also hunting hares um, however however Killy. In 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 a, in a non uh, killy way, just as a as a pet or as an animal that was just around. And interestingly, um, uh, when they are held. When they are held, it's they are held. It's usually when they are held, it's it's usually by children. Um, the, the mosaic in question, question is called the little.
time. <laughs> the, the mosaic in question is called the Little Hunt. So you have a huntsman on foot hunt, showing to be hunting hares, even though the picture showing to be hunting hares, be hunting hares, even though depictions of um huntsmen of huntsmen on horseback. Hmm. Yeah, you find that elsewhere. That yeah, you find that elsewhere. There are also hunt hunting hares. Um, however. However, what is interesting um, is that you do also find um, is that you do is that you do also find some um, depictions like both like some um, some um, um, some uh, depictions like both like most. Um, some, um, um, some, uh, predictions like both, some, uh, predictions like both, some, uh, predictions, some, uh, predictions. Depictions like both like mosaics and painting in both Italy and Britain that depict um, hairs being you do also find some depictions like both like mosaics and painting in both Italy and Britain that depict um, hairs being either being around or held by people in in, in a non. Mm -hmm. uh, In a, in a non uh, non killy way in a non killy way just as a as a pet or as an animal that was just around and interestingly um uh when they are held it's usually when they are held it's usually by children it's usually by children Oh yeah, I was just literally just thinking about that because I was like, I'm pretty sure they're only really helping my children in uh, depictions. Which in a way is interesting because like, if you look at rabbit ownership today, of course you know. Depictions. Which in a way is interesting because like, if you if you look at rabbit ownership today, of course you know. And I think traditionally rabbits. And I think traditionally rabbits were seen more as a a children's pet because because for, for a long time they were seen as an animal that was relatively easy to look after. So it was like a child's first first pet mm -hmm. sort of thing. So it is um I think I, I don't think that association is necessarily true, true anymore. I think it used to be a case that rabbits are seen, seen as a Mainly a children's pet. So, hmm. Yeah. hmm. Yeah, and it's interesting to see how long that kind of was, you know, you know an association. I mean, of really. course, those uh, children may have been holding rabbits for all they knew, because as I. Really? I mean, of course, those uh, children may have been hold holding rabbits. Uh, children may of course those children may have been holding rabbits for all they knew because as I said previous could not, could not tell the difference. It was all hairs to them. <laughs> um 
But um, yeah, like you also get like, yeah, like you also get like, in the written record, like specifically Britons, um, supposedly kept supposedly kept hares as pets, according to Julius Caesar. Uh, um, but again, you. But again, usual like big, 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 big pinch of salt with a written record. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, as we all know, Julius Caesar was a uh, yeah, as we all know, Julius Caesar was a notorious. Uh, liar. Why would you lie about hairs? As uh, I, I don't, I don't even want to know. <laughs> notorious liar. Uh, why would you lie about hairs? As uh, I, I don't, I don't even want to know. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you, clearly? Listen, uh, my hot... Listen, uh, my hot take about Julius Caesar is that he had too much time on his hands and did a lot of lying in text. Hot take, I know. Hot take, I know. Julius Caesar, you... Julie Caesar, you are being called out. Just saying. I'm sure he's very upset. <laughs> so say. Um, um, but, but yeah, uh, and um, as I was saying, you like that they. As I was saying, you like that they could not tell the difference between rabbits and hares, they just refer to rabbits as hares, or a diff different type of hare, that was found in the Iberian Peninsula. And in that, they were not wrong, because rabbits do originally come from uh, uh, <laughs> the Iberian Peninsula and parts of France. And they do originally come from <laughs> the Iberian Peninsula and parts of France. And they've been sort of introduced mm -hmm. sort of everywhere else only at a later date. Um, and, and from where things stand at, at the minute, so the introduction of rabbits to Britain uh, seems to have some parallels um, with the fallow deer, which we discussed a couple ep episodes ago. Because um, yeah. as far as we're aware, at present, um, they were first introduced by the Romans. <laughs> um, they were first in first introduced. They were first introduced by the Romans, <laughs> but they didn't get fully established yep. until the Norman pe period, much like the, fa the fallow deer. Um, and although, and although there is evidence for rabbits in earlier archaeological contexts um the issue is that contexts the issue is that up to up until recently um those uh, specimens those uh, the issue is that up to up until recently to up until recently up until recently those uh, specimens have never been uh, are no tested are no tested for adna or carbon dated so some of things still need testing um the ones that have Some of things still need testing. The ones that have have uh, shown that they do tend to be intrusive, because from later animals yeah. that burrowed. Again, yeah. that's that issue. So yeah. the first sort of confirmed case that's had both um, C14 dating and ADNA is a, a um, rabbit tibia that was found at the Roman Fishbourne Palace, where zoo archaeologist Dr. Faye Worley I don't, um, uh, it's just she identified it, and then you know. Uh, it's just she identified it, and and then you know, she identified. It's just she identified. It's just she identified. 
because she identified it early because she identified it and then you know like research was carried out after that and um it has been pro and um it has been proven it has been proven to be genuine so it is a, a true roman rabbit <laughs> So I was also thinking that entire time because uh, I, I I obviously knew the story too because I I've talked to Faye before. Um, it's um, it's I, it's I feel like this is. Most things, really. Well, no, because it's it was it's it's only in the. Most things, really. Well, no, because it's it was it's only in the grand scheme of things. It's only relatively recently that these sort of scientific methods have started, sort of seeping into, into archaeology. They would not have been uh, common practice. Uh, common common practice. Well, when like Fishbourne was dug, what in the sixties? So something like yeah. that, yeah. It was a while um, ago. So I guess part of like, aside from carrying oh, out new enough. analysis, I guess some, something that uh, we are getting round to doing is also looking at all, at all these old sites and see how we can revisit that archaeological record. So, yeah, yeah, yeah tell right. me about it. <laughs> it that archaeological record. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Ugh, gosh. Ugh, gosh. But yeah, no, it's it's really interesting, and um, I'm it's it, specific. But yeah, no, it's it's really interesting, and um, I'm it's I'm it's specifically with rabbits. It's interesting. Specifically with rabbits, it's interesting because, like we said, they have this tendency to. But because they burrow, but because they burrow, it's just like ten times. I mean, harder. sometimes it's quite obvious because you you will actually find the burrow. find the burrow yeah, yeah to like going through this i don't know this pit or ditch or whatever you're digging and it's like what's this thing oh it tunnels oh right <laughs> but sometimes it's not i mean <laughs> but sometimes it's not i mean but sometimes it's not i mean it depends on the site and uh you know the the whole thing about of archaeology is that it's uh gonna be the hard, hardest thing possible from what i understand yeah the, the, them burrowing animals Ugh, just don't burrow it should be so easy to not not do that look at hairs hairs don't necessarily burrow. don't tell rabbits to act against their nature if they want to burrow they can burrow to their heart's content i'm anti-burrowing you heard it here first <laughs> folks okay um the of course rabbits, much like hares. The of course rabbits, much like hares, were also extensively hunted. Um, we actually have um evidence of uh, rabbits being hunted ever since the Paleolithic in Northern Europe, which is wild. Yeah, no, that's wild. I mean, I guess like the the they're probably not the hardest thing to uh, hunt. No, I guess not. It's just, it's interesting uh, to think of, like, how, when these... <laughs> but, like, because even hares are still relatively small. Because even hares are still relatively small. <laughs> just find it interesting that, that someone was like, we're gonna, we're gonna eat that. <laughs> For sure. I mean, if you're hungry, you're hungry. And um, don't yeah, right. it. <laughs> you got to think in a rabbit stew now. Mm. Um, but yes, so, so mm. rabbits were, of course, extensively hunted. Um, but yes, so, so rabbits were, of course, extensively hunted. Um, and... Um, 
and um and um is they've proven to be hunted is they've proven to be so fairly they've proven to be so sensibly hunted they've proven to be so fairly good food source especially mm -hmm. um in the post roman period because for reasons um in, in the post roman period because for reasons and let me know if you do know the reason why um rabbits uh were, rabbits uh were believed to be a substitute to meat during lent i mean i knew about fish hmm. because at the time the medieval period yeah, apparently fish same. wasn't to meat during lent hmm. i mean i knew about fish yeah because same. at the time the medieval period apparently fish wasn't, wasn't meat apparently for reasons um but but and neither were rabbits so they were actually extensively kept by monks in the post-roman period of europe so they so they could eat them during lent instead of meat yeah uh which incidentally is also when uh, it's believed which incidentally is also when uh, it's believed that rabbits Rabbits may have first been tamed because they were like uh, sort of actively sort of bred and kept it sort of not confined. That's not the right term. Um, but yeah, they were kept literally. But yeah, they were kept literally in hutches and just bred, bred extensively and just bred extensively for food. Um, so it is. So it is believed that that's when they were first started to get tamed. Uh, but then again, he all, uh, but then again, he all comes down to the to get tamed. But then again, he all comes down to the the usual. It was probably probably not a single domestication event. It probably happened several times. Yep, in different time periods, different geographical location. Of course, should have that on a t-shirt. Should have on a t-shirt. <laughs> Domestication. Never once. Never, never, never a single event. <laughs> um, nothing like rabbits as food. Nothing like rabbits as food source. Um, they were well established. So, sort of, um, 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 they, um. Source. They were well established, sort of um, by sort of the later medieval period as well, where they were actually highly priced, and indicative of high status. Mm -hmm. And once again, they were purposely bred and kept in hutches. Yeah, and I feel like I don't know this is more of an American thing, but I think it's still related to kind of like a high status. That is, yeah, high status food, uh, because because anyone I knew growing up, like. It if you ate rabbit, it was probably at a fancy restaurant, you know? I don't know if it's different in other parts of the world, but speaking as an American, of course, the most important one, ones. I was just, I had a quick question. Is that <laughs> oh, oh, no. I was just, I had a quick question. Is that <laughs> oh, no. It is relevant. <laughs> so if you remember back to the episode, yeah. So if you remember back to the episode about the cows. Yeah. You know, the cow episode. Yeah. And there was a situation. The most important ones. I was just, I had a quick question. It's actually relevant. It is relevant. <laughs> oh, no. Whoa. So if you remember back to the episode. So if you remember back to the episode about the cows. Yeah. You know, the Kai episode. Yeah. And there was a situation in which there was, there was an extremely large cow going, going by the name of Knickers. Oh, oh my God, I miss Knickers. So, anyway, 
that cow grew to an enormous size, right? Yeah. Uh, th- obviously through domestication, through gen- genetics, etc. Would it be possible if we domesticated the rabbits further to make massive rabbits? So like a, a Knickers-sized rabbit? Well, proportionally so, but yes. Like a, like a big old chunky boy. Like a really ch- chunky boy. Real chunky boy. <laughs> I mean, chunky. Well, to be fair, we already have that, and it's called the, the Fle- Flemish giant True. rabbit. Yeah. Okay. So we've 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 already kind of answered your question. Wait, wait. How big is the Flemish giant rabbit? Big. Although I feel like it's a- 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 uh, the Flemish giant rabbits weigh, on average, fifteen pounds. Um, in real real terms, how much is fifteen pounds in kilograms? Because that's so real. like slightly over one stone. Oh, say, no kilograms. Uh, oh, six, six point eight kilograms, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're back to metric. Oh gosh, six point eight kilograms. Still don't get it. Lived here almost five years. Don't get it. <laughs> right. Anyway, I understand that now. So yeah, six. Yeah, because I think with knickers as well. I think we discussed it at the time. It's also because knickers wasn't really a cow. It was a steer. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I so, yeah. so they will be bigger and, bigger and taller. Um, so I, th- I think it was just. So I think it was just a slightly larger than average steer. Big chunky boy. Are there other giant rabbits, or is it just the, is the Flemish one like like the biggest one that you guys know of? I think it's one of the biggest that I can think of because. Um, yeah, because some of the lop breeds are like the Im- think of. Yeah, because yeah, some of the lop breeds are like the English lop is pretty yeah. big, big, but not to that size. And mostly just the ears are huge in um in English lops, like in um. huge in english lops like it's it, it's ridiculous the, the the size of the ears i mean i've seen some really big rabbits on instagram so so you know hashtag big rabbit they on think, i don't know it's just like you know you look up those chunky boys chunky animals it's a habit it's fun anyway <laughs> speaking yeah, no, I think the Flemish giant is probably the that I can think of. And, you know, uh, it was probably good for people who kept uh, rabbits. <laughs> yeah, no, I think the Flemish giant is probably the largest breed that I can think of. And, you know, being large, uh, it was probably good for... It was probably good for people who kept uh, rabbits because one of the other things that uh, they would use them for is they would use them for is their pelts. Nice shiny furs as pelts, which is also, I guess, sad to think about. <laughs> yeah, but the thing with uh, rabbits, I mean, the, their pelts are sort of still. Yeah, yeah. But thing with uh, rabbits, I mean, the, their pelts are sort of still used. Uh, true. Yeah. And actually, their um, and actually their um, rabbits are used. Did you know that you could? And actually, the rabbits are used. Did you know that you could? Did you know that you And actually did you know that you can make wool out of a rabbit? I'm I'm gonna admit something very embarrassing. Uh I knew that because of a video game. <laughs> Thank you, Stardew Valley, for um... teaching me that.
Um, no, because the way, like, one of them. No, because the way, like, one of them sort of modern uh, breed... breeds of rabbit is the Angora. And that you would have heard of the term Angora before. So, because if you look at the composition of the woolly jumper, you might find that the percentage of it is Angora. And uh, you might be wondering about some weird sheep things that I've not heard of. That's actually and as rabbit. we all know, Angora sweaters was once loved by greatest uh, director. And as we all know, Angora sweaters was, was once loved by greatest uh, director of all time, Ed Wood. That's a reference for like. I did not know people. that. <laughs> five people. <laughs> I did not know, not know that. Hmm. Um, but um, yeah, so the, I don't think. Yeah, so the, I don't think. Like, like rabbits don't actually get harmed. You just like you have to groom them constantly and sort of and uh, actually get harmed. You just like mm -hmm. you have to groom them constantly and sort of and uh, well then uh, you can actually mm. spin it and knit yourself a scarf out of, <laughs> out of your your knit yourself a scarf rabbit scarf. Out of, out of your rabbit's <laughs> shed fur. Yeah. But yeah, clearly there were a lot of reasons why uh, people in the past would be keeping rabbits. Uh, and, uh, you know, eventually, uh, a bit more recently, uh, they started keeping them as pets as well. Because yeah, I think it's a quite recent thing, um, rabbit fancy. Rabbit. So I'm not... More recently, uh, they started keeping them as pets as well. Because yeah, I think it's a quite recent thing, uh, um, rabbit, rabbit fancy. Rabbit. So not unlike cat, because the cat fancy didn't start until quite mm -hmm. late as well. Because now, like uh, fast forward, and we've got a plethora of rabbit breeds, uh, which vary dramatically in size. More morphology, fur color, and type. Um, so like morphology, the most um, the one that's free. So like morphology, the the most um, the one that springs to mind. Morphology, the the most um, the the most um, the most um, morphology, the the most um, the one that springs to Apology the the most apology the the most uh, the the most uh, apology the one that springs to mind the apology the one that springs to mind the most is uh, lop mm -hmm. breed so with the one with floppy yeah. ears so my rabbit's no. a lop of some description. Um, of course, you have uh, like the Flemish giant, which are huge, and dwarf varieties, which are really, really small. You have, have uh, uh, breeds like the Angora, which, uh, yeah, yeah, with what they shed, you can, which, uh, with what they shed, you can actually be, make woolen products out of. Um, and then you have breeds like the Rex, which actually has very, very very short fur and it sort of feels like plush they're the softest thing <laughs> i've ever touched uh rex bunnies yeah um so yeah plenty of rabbits or so yeah plenty of rabbits or yeah to continue uh so after for everyone yeah and uh that popularity would surely continue uh so after we we take a break we will talk a bit more about our case studies and specifically probably the most popular rabbit around the easter yes, bunny the easter bunny <laughs> The Easter Bunny. 
books I have are on Roman. T- <laughs> is it? Is there anything to do with Roman tax and the rabbits? <laughs> were, the ta- were the rabbits tax system? Oh, most likely. <laughs> like I can dream, <laughs> but in a way, like like it would have been in the from the third century onwards, it would have been pretty unequal. And we are back, and I think Simona was just throwing. And we are back, and I, th- I think Simona was just threat- threatening to make rabbit chili uh, over the break. I can possibly co- comment. Oh, gosh. <laughs> anyway, we are back with uh, everyone's favorite part of the... Uh, everyone's favorite... Everyone's favorite part of the podcast, the case studies. And, and uh, tis the season, I guess, uh, for some people studies and uh tis the season tis the season i guess uh for some people who do celebrate uh easter uh so this is pretty t- so this is pretty timely so what is it with lagomorphs and why do we associate them with easter ha i i couldn't possibly comment <laughs> um i think one thing that per- comment i think one thing that per- i think one thing that personally really, um springs to mind um pun not in pun not intended it's because what it is one of the most striking things that you see sort of in springtime mm-hmm. no okay fighting hairs <laughs> The hairs come out, they tend to get a bit more active. You see them more, more and uh, one of the most striking th- things that you can see sort of that herald spring is hairs yeah. fighting because uh, that, that's what they like doing around this this time of year. I guess see each of their own. So personally, that would have been no, an, an yeah. interesting association. If you, But if you're trying to break up the fights, are you then splitting hairs? Uh, association if association if you, but if you're trying to break up the fights are you then splitting hairs uh, <sighs> yes yes <laughs> I got it joking <laughs> i mean calling it a joke's a real stretch i, I don't want to hear any of that no oh yes, yes. i'm putting my foot down on this yeah, we're not board. doing it oh, no uh, uh, I, 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 you're thumping. All the other people. no <laughs> alex you did it you did it yourself i hate this podcast <laughs> it's the worst podcast ever Oh, it's amazing. What a great advertisement. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I am extremely anti pun. How dare you? I'm allowed, allowed to say that. You're on the wrong show then. I, I'm totally, totally pro pun. No, I think we, I, need me I, to... I, we need puns for all. You no, know, you need me to be, be unbiased. We need to show both pun sizes. No, anyway. that wasn't funny. It, no, it no. wasn't because it wasn't supposed to be funny. Uh, ter- terrible. Ugh. Anyway, bunnies, Easter. So I think one of the more common kind of, I, I don't even know if I want to call it a misconception because who knows? Uh, is, is a lot of people. Who knows? Uh, is a lot of people let, try to make connections between rabbits and hares with, with Ostara, 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 Ostara. We'll go with the Ostara. Help me, Simona. Yeah, uh, which is the I guess
Ostara? Ostara. We'll go with Ostara. Yeah. Uh, which is the, I guess, um, which is the, I guess, um, pagan equivalent? Is, pagan equivalent is probably not the right term, but, uh, I mean, it kind of, but, uh, I mean, it kind of is. Happen- I mean, it kind of is. Happens around the same time. Uh, it probably predates Easter because of um. Excuse me, it probably predates Easter because of um how a lot of the original how a lot of the original so like the first of pagan holidays slowly turned into to Christian ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the only issue with those kind of connections is that we don't necessarily have like. Real concrete proof, but you know, hey, who knows? Um, but I guess the real kind of connection people make when it comes to that is the uh, uh, f- fertility symbolism. When it comes to that is the uh, f- fertility symbolism. Uh, so you know, uh, so you know, uh, bunnies. Bunnies, rabbits, they are associated with fertility. Which we Uh, shall not go into details by. Kids, ask your parents. Kids, ask your parents. Uh, But also that also... But also that also connects with, you know, the the fact that this rabbit is walking around with a bunch of eggs. Also a fertility symbol. Because, like, uh, uh, rabbits are notorious egg hoarders. Of course, of course, yes. You know, when... Of course, yes. You know, when when the Easter Bunny lays all, all those eggs I get to find uh, the next, next morning? Oh, I hate it when that ha- happens. Yeah. You hate to see it, folks. Uh, but... Uh, so, like, the more... The, uh, so, like, the more... The concept of... Uh, so, like, the more the concept of the concept of the Easter Bunny that we all know, that happens. Yeah, you hate to see it, folks. Con- concept of the Easter Bunny that we all know and maybe love, uh, seems to have or- originated with seems to have or- originated with uh, German Lutherans. And uh, that's kind of spread with uh, and, uh, that's kind of and that's kind of spread and with uh, 18th century uh, and Germans who uh, the Easter Bunny would say referred to as the Osterhase? As the Osterhouses? House, houses? Oster? This entire episode okay, is me not it, knowing how to, how to pronounce I'm, stuff. <laughs> okay, something I can say is it's an Osterhase. Osterhase. I used to take German. This is embarrassing. Uh, yeah, there you, there you go. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, they seem to have brought this to the US, and uh, uh, like all good things, uh, it became uh, incredibly things. Uh, it uh, it became it became uh, incredibly marketable and commercialized in America. It's what we do best, truly. Really. And a few other parts of the world too, too. In all fairness, of course, yes, yes, of course, of course. Uh, and now we have chocolate bunnies and all the other fun stuff. Although I will say, someone who doesn't. Have- doesn't necessarily celebrate Easter. I do love a chocolate bunny. I always feel bad about eating no. eating them though. But where do you start though? That's the really. But where do you start though? That's the really important question we have to cover on this podcast. Oh, the head. Do you start? Yeah, right. You start at the the the, the ears. You've been, to- been talking about eating. No, eating. no, no, no. You split it in half. No, you don't. You you yeah, chop. You split it in half. And you eat chop. It. <laughs> Yeah, no, you split it in half down the middle and you chop each side. Easy. That's so much work. That's so much work. 
What is wrong with you? You chomp. Huh. That's me chomping. <laughs> Are you hungry, Alex? I'm always hungry. Although, to be fair, I actually uh, had an Easter egg uh, uh, chocolate the other day. Getting, getting, getting early. Getting it in all early. It, sorry, all this talk of like eating rabbits and the. Sorry, all this talk of like eating rabbits and the, the cat, cat has just jumped on my lap. So you go, oh, that's the time, Tom. Can I eat the yeah. rabbit now? No, you, st you still may not. <laughs> But I guess um, the real thing with the uh, um, the real the real thing with the uh, association with flag of wars and Easter is that it's actually the focus of a another huge project that is currently happening. Uh, we've talked about her before. We've talked about her before, uh, but, uh, but uh, Naomi Sykes, who is, Naomi Sykes, who is a fantastic Zorky queen of the uh, related project here in the in the UK, uh, has uh, is one of the uh, uh, UK uh, has uh, is one of the. Uh, Here in the UK, one of the uh, is one of the UK. Uh, is one of the uh, here in the UK as one of the uh, main investigators. Here in the UK, as uh, one of the uh, main investigators for the uh, uh, Easter project, yeah, which is once again uh, uh, another really interesting <laughs> study that is multidisciplinary in nature because it covers sort of zoo archaeology, but also history, art history, anthropology, evolutionary biology, law, uh, natural history. Uh, natural history but you name it it's probably in there <laughs> yeah for those of you uh who may not uh, remember but we or one of the minds behind the chicken project uh she's also attached to the fallow deer project basically if there's a big project about animals she is probably part of it somehow <laughs> it's very cool though i love i love big projects because um yeah, no, I think we need more interdisciplinary projects because, um, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I think we need more interdisciplinary kind of projects that tackle these sort of things because uh, we still don't necessarily. Uh, we still don't necessarily have any conclusive things uh, to talk, talk about when it uh, to talk about when it comes to why do we associate like yeah, but it's all it's um it's great episode i love yeah no, but it's all it's um it's great episode it's great I love multidisciplinary projects. Uh, uh, my so good. A, a, a picture like a big jigsaw puzzle. And then it all fits together because, yeah. like, just the archaeology alone, in a way, like, it doesn't, it doesn't always suffice. Always suffice. 
Mm-hmm. And then you get all these different disciplines, disciplines feed, feeding into it. And it's a, it's, it's really good. Stuff. Disciplines, disciplines feeding, different disciplines, disciplines, disciplines feeding, disciplines feeding, all these different disciplines feeding into it. And it's a, it's really good stuff. So like, um, we'll put the, so like, uh, we'll put the, um, We'll put the um, we'll put the um, website down in the show notes, so please go check it out. And um, the zoo archaeology side, the zoo archaeology side of it in particular, um, focuses a lot focuses a lot on the idea of sort of native versus, versus alien or like introduced spe- species, which again is something that uh, Naomi Sykes does a lot of, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and really well. And really well. Um and so specifically in this case case they and so specifically in this case they they're gonna look at you know the native mountain mountain hair, the introduced brown hair, and of course rabbits. So if you, if yeah, you, if yeah. you want to learn more about So if you, if yeah. you want to learn more about what we talked about today, but better rabbits. Yeah. So if you if you want to learn more about what what we talked about today, but better then check then check out her work. <laughs> yeah, and one of the, one of the interesting things is 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 that it may sound like oh so how does that actually uh engage with the uh engage engage with the easter the whole easter thing well one of the reasons why they're looking at that is because they also noticed that the the kind of historical cycle stuff comes in and the uh combined with the more vibrant Uh, combined and with the more vibrant And with the more biocultural stuff, which is really interesting. And I love seeing, especially with Naomi, I love seeing these projects get, uh, which is really interesting. And I love seeing, especially, especially with Naomi, I love seeing these projects get uh, uh, funded and start working because, you know, it's nothing to do with you. You have uh, this, this creature, that feels so uh, impersonal. You have this animal that is slowly but surely spread across Europe, and it's also culturally being spread uh, in traditions. So, in traditions, so it's it's a nice way to way to kind of like, like put those together, um, and it's also a more broad kind of like put those kind of like put those two together. It's a nice way to put those two together. Uh, nice way to put those two together, um, and it's also a more. And it's also a together, and it's also a more broad uh, research project in kind of talking about how we have animals that we consider native versus animals that we consider alien, and like how do we, you know, how do human humans. Uh,
there. And it's also a kind of make that distinction based on our relations with animals. It's it's a really cool project. It's very big, uh, big, uh, and and like we said, we'll put uh, a link to the the. We'll put uh, a link. Like we said, we'll put a link to the project in the show notes. That is really good, and I particularly like. I really enjoy sort of like these um looking at these shifts in cultural cultural dynamics. I guess like a similar, similar but not quite. It's like with um your traditional, your traditional Christmas meal in Britain, which is just now sort of mm-hmm. for the most part Turkey. Yeah, which of course was never the case before. I believe I believe it used to be goose. Yeah, that's what. As someone someone who's only, as someone who's only, uh, before I moved here, my only only uh, interaction with British, only uh, interaction, uh, interaction with my only interaction with British Christmas was watching A Christmas Carol. Uh, yeah, that's what I assumed. Uh, yeah, that's what. I That's what I assumed. <laughs> it is now Turkey, so it's like an animal that has uh, has been brought brought over from the other side of the ocean and has spread sort of, sort of have been that has uh, has been brought over from the like an animal that has has been brought over. that has, has been been brought over from, like an animal that has been brought over from the other side of the ocean and has spread sort of have been become sort of part of traditions here part of traditions here yeah no and that's where you know you know like i said that's kind of where where it all traditions here you know like i said that's kind of where it all it all you know like i said that's kind of traditions here that's kind of where it all starts coming together i mean and you have like people in religious studies also uh, rabbit was rabbit was a meat used uh, t- uh, a meat substitute for a lettuce. Was a meat used uh, a meat substitute for a meat substitute for a Or rabbit was a meat substitute for a Lent. So how does that actually factor in with all this other stuff that we've been talking about, you know? Yeah, because of course, of course Lent, yeah, Lent also does happen around the same time. I think... I think sure, I didn't... <laughs> I have no idea. I think Lent... Is... Sure, I didn't... <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea. I think Lent... Is... It's sort of it's the the fast that precedes Easter, Easter, but I may be wrong. Sure, I have no idea. No idea. I have no idea that 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 kind of stuff yes, is too modern Lent for me. Is before Easter. Okay. Lent is before Easter. Yeah, no, Lent, I grew up. Doing isn't Lent, Lent sort of signifies mm-hmm. by sort of the forty days in the? Isn't Lent sort of signifies mm-hmm. sort of the forty days, forty days in the desert? That's the mm-hmm. one. Yeah, it's the days in the desert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the temptation of Jesus Christ. Yeah, you have to give something up, and it's weird because, like, I think, I think there's a kind of like you can have fish on Sunday. I think couldn't remember. I don't know. I, I, I kind of grew up in Lent, and I, I never actually gave up anything decent. I always forgot that I was meant to give something up. So I don't know. 
and then I try to get really, really kind of like technical with it and like, oh, oh I'm going to give up. Give up um, coveting, other coveting other people's stuff. I mean, how am I? I can only check that, so yeah. I, I once tried to give up, give up wanting, like, like being like envious of other people's stuff. Yeah, that was weird. I was a weird child. I can't say it's not, yeah, it, it's not something I've, uh, I've ever done myself. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, rough, roughly it's that you have Lent and then I think it's part. But I think, yeah, roughly it's that you have Lent and then I think it's Palm Sunday and then it's also the, the lead up to Easter. But yeah, it's also funny because like I didn't, grew up in a uh, religious household so i don't know, know any of this stuff at all uh we just you know, you know I, I, I practice this stuff so so uh, kind, of... kind of just hid eggs and ate chocolate bunnies so yeah this project's really exciting to see uh, uh the other side of these things to see uh To see the other side of these things that is in the like more mo modern day commercial. I think I've never really seen chocolate bunnies before I moved to Britain. Or... I think I've never really seen chocolate bunnies before I moved moved to Britain. Or fairness, I think back home we mainly just have Easter eggs, and I think hmm. you you tend to have rabbit. On Easter Sunday, which hmm. I, I don't have because I, I cannot bring myself to eat rabbit. So I don't. Yeah, Fair I enough, don't I get rabbit. that. Oddly enough, I think in America, the main Easter food is ham. At least that's what I associate with it. But is that weird? It's a thing. Yeah, like, is it like, like, what, like a roast ham, like gammon, or what, what do you usually like, have? Yeah, like a roast ham. Well, not me personally. I had a very interesting uh, Easter tradition, which, which was I went to Connecticut and we went to a very specific steakhouse to eat. So I didn't eat any of that stuff. Like an Easter steak. Yeah, well, I think I used to get, because I was a fancy lad, I used to get get i used to get duck <laughs> oh that is fancy i think ducks fancier than duck rabbit. steak no not duck steak yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing duck steak no that's that's got me thinking can you get like a duck or a rabbit chili like is that a thing rabbit chili is definitely a thing Really, and I've... I feel like part of the reason why I think that is because of Red, Red Dead Redemption. Why? Why? Because I think think that's what they eat in that game. I never played it, played it but uh, but yeah, no, I'm pretty sure rabbit chili is a thing. Duck chili, I don't necessarily know if it's a thing. Oh. There is a new new episode: the Zoo Archaeology of Video Game Meals. We'll have to do oh that at God. some point. Yeah. We, 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 well, that will be a future episode, <laughs> but for sure. I, I can all, all I can think of is duck steak. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh no! Oh my, oh, why did you, did you say duck steak? <laughs> well, she was talking about steak. Oh and... my god! Yeah, I know. I know. She went to the steak house, and yes, it. it I mean, you, you can't really have have rabbit steak, can you? <laughs> I mean, I guess you. I mean, I know it's the you could. The world's smallest steak. <laughs> It'd be like like tiny. Yeah, but for like ground oh. meat and made to a patty or something. I think we're losing him. I think we're losing him. Oh God! God. Oh, sorry. I'm just Thank rethinking you. duck steak. <laughs> yeah okay that's gonna that's gonna stay with me yeah and you know what i think this is, this is probably a, a good place to to leave our listeners Absolutely, because after an hour of factual inf information and research <laughs> all he takes away with him is dog steak whoa, whoa. I, you gotta do that part wait so hold on simona do you get the reference i did not hear what you said
I did not hear what you said. Uh, I don't think she does. Did you ever watch a show? Oh, did you get the reference? I don't think she does. Did you Did you ever watch a show uh, uh, based on uh, Donald Duck, like a cartoon show? No. His three nephews. Like his th- yeah. Uh, do you know who Scrooge McDuck? McDuck is someone. Yes. Okay. Do you remember? Remember? Do you ever watch a cartoon with Scrooge McDuck in it? Yes. Okay. Do you remember what it was called? Ducktales. Woo! 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 Uh, yes! Yay! I think on that, uh, that triumphant word. note, we will end this episode, which is somehow went from t- talking spe- specifically about rabbits and hares. To making jokes about ducktails. Um, <laughs> Focus in a wave we've gone from, from rabbits through eggs. <laughs> Focus in a wave we've gone as... from rabbits through eggs through birds again. It just you can't yes. let birds go. Let's go. No, no, I guess I can't. I, I'll never let you go. Uh, <laughs> as always, you can follow us. Right, um, Twitter, uh, animals, let us know how you uh, enjoy it. Let us know if you want enjoyed or not enjoyed these episodes uh let us know if you want Simona to talk way more about roman tax because you know uh <laughs> tell your friends friends about uh <laughs> tell your friends about tell your friends about us rate and review us whatever i don't know what else to say uh but yeah, that's been Archie Animals. As always, I'm Alex Patrick. Let's see what a what a falanga. Uh, rabbits and I don't know. uh, rabbits and I don't know, whatever. Duck, Duck steak. steaks. Woo! <laughs> <Jinx. laughs>
everyone, and welcome to Archeo Animals, Donna Falanga, and my co host, Alex Fitzpatrick. several times huge that is because they are
Thank you.